Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and the Bevy Game Edge just formed the Bevy Foundation. We're gonna get into exactly what the foundation is all about and why they formed it in just a second. But first, a quick overview of Bevy itself. I've covered it a number of times in the past on the channel. I am quite excited by this project. It is the second most popular game engine on GitHub. So it's definitely growing in scope. It is number two behind the Godot game engine in terms of GitHub popularity. And it is a free and open source Rust uh, game framework. They're working on an editor there. So somewhere between a framework and a game engine, depends on how you define these things. So it is a really cool project. I'm not going to go into too much details of it. Just to let you know, it is very robust in its support. It is getting updated quite often. It has a large community behind it. And yes, they are working towards an editor going forward. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is Bevy. Basically, if you want to create a game using the Rust programming language, Bevy is probably where you want to start. And they just formed a foundation. So what exactly is the foundation all about? Well, this is a really common thing in the world of game development. In fact, the Godot formed their own foundation. They used to be under the Linux foundation, so they used to use someone else for running this. But basically, once your project hits a certain size and you're taking donations in you're going to need a foundation. Once we move beyond like a single developer, it's basically a trust or a manager for funds. Uh, it basically is a nonprofit or a charity organization. They're organized in different ways. Uh, Godot is a European based product. So they are a Dutch nonprofit called uh, that stitching. Uh, basically the exact same thing that the Blender Foundation did uh, in the past. Uh, we also have the Default Foundation. This is also quite common when a engine is spun off from a commercial entity. Uh, they'll set it up as a foundation. It's a good way to like, you know, initially seed money into it. It gives you the ability to put all the money in one place and then pay out from there. And there's actually some very tangible reasons why you would want to form a foundation as an open source project. And one of the best examples is probably this. Back when the whole Unity thing happened, Happened. Um, there's a company out there called Relogic, the makers of Terraria. Well, they actually made some donations, some pretty major donations. One was to FNA, which was a single developer, so you could get away with it. And then the other one was the Godot game engine, which has its own foundation. But you may be thinking, okay, why FNA, but not Mono Game? Well, the problem is Mono Game did not have a, a nice st structure there. So you don't know who you would actually be giving the money to. It's not a single developer effort. It's a team based, but there was no foundation at the top. So the Mono Game team formed their foundation. And then at that point in time, Relogic went ahead and made them a huge donation as well. So if you want to get donations, especially if you want to get these large value donations, having some kind of a, um, foundation at the top is a very important thing. On top of that, once they become charitable organizations, the company making donations to you uh, can make uh, deductions and so on. Depends on the country you're in, tax situations. I am definitely not an accountant or a tax lawyer, so I'm not going to get into that aspect here, but let's get back to the Bevy Foundation. So announced yesterday, the Beverly Foundation was formed, and it's the next step in their journey to build a world-class free and open-source game engine. Bevy is a non-profit organization formed in Washington State with a pending federal 501c3 tax-exempt application. Yeah, again, not my area of expertise. A big step for us, and no one's been taken lightly. This will be a long post, so we'll cover the highlights here. The Beverly Foundation is largely a legal formalization of the leadership and operational structure we have been using. The Bevy leadership that you know and hopefully trust is also at the helm of the Bevy Foundation. The biggest difference is the power is distributed more evenly. Nothing is fundamentally changing about how we build and release Bevy as a free and open source software. This is not a business model rug pull. It is a legal formalization of our mission to build and release Bevy as a free and open source software to members of the general public. And you can donate to the Bevy Foundation. Now, one of the really cool things about a foundation generally is it gives a project some resiliency beyond the actual founder. So if um, the, the lead developer, Carter at CART here, decides to bail on Bevy, well, now Bevy, the trademark, Bevy, the website, and all those other things are owned by the foundation, not by that individual. So it gives the project some permanence beyond the original founder. So it's a good step to see for the most part. Uh, so kind of details here about how Russ started. Uh, so he's still going to be the project lead, but he no longer makes all the decisions. Years now, organization has a delegated decision-making authority across members of the Bevy community. They have five maintainers uh, and more subject matter experts that were pivotal in making Bevy what it is today. Uh, we have, they have, um, as they've grown, they've 
gained what they will call organizational debt. So funding Bevy has been a popularity contest. So right now, basically, all of the money that goes to Bevy generally goes to Bevy developers. So each one has their own funding on GitHub or whatever. And since he was the highest profile member there, he got the majority of the funding. On top of that, they, actu um, they lacked organizational legitimacy. So they'd like to attract the attention of and funding of people and companies serious about game dev. Uh, and then this kind of goes back to the example I gave earlier about Mono Game and why they became a foundation because they was basically required for Relogic to be able to make the gifting to them. So uh, again, it's it's perfectly logical if you want to actually you know uh, fundraise more, get more corporations behind you, etc. Uh, and like I said earlier on, uh, Carter, uh, the lead developer, owned all of the keys. So basically, Bevy was him, and he was Bevy. Even though it was a team effort at this point in time, if he wanted to shut down the domain, he could. If he wanted to sell the trademark off to somebody else, he could. Now it is owned by the foundation, of which he is, you know, a, a controlling member or a, a com big component of it. But it now it, it will outlive and outlast him. So there's a stability there for sure. Um, their mission statement for their 501c3 application. Our mission is to promote, protect, and advance the free and open source Bevy engine and related open source projects. We coordinate and promote its continued maintenance and development, educate and train members of the general public in the usage, uh, and conduct research and development to advance the state of the art of creating real-time applications and simulation. Or TLDR, we exist to develop Bevy and teach people how to use it. So Bevy Foundation is a nonprofit incorporated in Washington State. It means that the money we raise cannot be used to benefit our members, officers, or directors except as compensation for services rendered. Uh, we do not have owners or shareholders. We are formed exclusively to accommodate our mission as stated as a public benefit. Uh, so details of the application itself. These are the board of directors. So Carter Anderson, uh, the, the founder here, uh, Alice Cecile, Francois uh, Mockers, Robert Swain, and James Liu. So those are going to be the board of directors. So again, it goes from being just Carter in charge to formally you have these uh, five people that are now in charge. Uh, he, has, he is the president of the board, though, and Alice is the secretary. Alice is important here, actually, because as we go on for what is going to change going forward, um, their plans here is that Alice is going to be brought on full time. Uh, so right now, uh, Carter is getting money from the GitHub thing. Now, over time, that GitHub money will disappear and it'll go into the foundation instead. So people that are sponsoring him directly will instead probably donate to the foundation, at which time in time, theoretically, the foundation itself should have more money and be able to hire more developers. So basically, the end result or the short term result of the foundation is that they can hire on Alice as a full time employee. And he is already a full time employee and then going forward they will get um the gold together now there was this comment down earlier on there are limitations of how you can actually use the money except except as compensation for services rendered so that is part of it there are limitations for how they can be paid um, and the details are down here uh, so Alice deserves to be paid for her work if Bevy needs her full time. Her goal is for the Bevy Foundation to pay a reasonably competitive, uh, roughly market rate salaries. Therefore, her first goal is to pay Alice a salary of 150k a year. I know that is definitely much more generous than the Godot project, but truth of the matter is, if you are a project engineer uh, at, at a game engine level, like if you're doing working on rendering tech or uh, engineering at, at you know the core of a game engine level, that is a very reasonable salary. Obviously, it comes down to where you live in the world. Uh, but in let's say if you or in California, yeah, that's that's possibly even a low salary. So it all comes down to where you are. Uh, so that's the idea behind it. And then eventually he's going to join as well. So right now he is sponsored uh, directly through GitHub, etc. Those will eventually move over to the foundation and hopefully they will both be employed uh, going forward. In terms of future plans, our focus will be on funding more Bevy developers, both full-time and part-time. We'll likely explore targeting one-time grants for specific efforts. Later down the line, we will likely explore the development of Bevy Asset Store where the community can list and sell Bevy compatible assets. Also like to reinduce Bevy merch store. While we don't think this is an ideal fundraising strategy, we find uh, we think it will be a fun way for the Bevy community to show their pride and considering the following future programs. Uh, is this compatible with the Bevy Foundation's mission? Is this the best interest of the Bevy community and the general public? Will this compromise the integrity of Bevy as a free and open source offering in any way? Will this change our incentives in a way that is risking answers to one, two, or three? And if we are monetizing something, are we doing it in an ethical way? So that is it. And of course, they are looking for further contributions and help going forward. So if you're interested, you are now basically giving your money towards the foundation. And this is how the foundation is acting. Uh, all told, pretty much 
it's a good thing. It does take away a bit of the risk of a project, especially when a project transitions from being, you know, a single developer focus to a team-based focus. It removes some of the power from that single developer's hands. It gives more stability to the project. It does make it easier for organizations to donate to the project. And generally, it is a good thing. So that is why uh, you're seeing more and more of these projects moved to a foundational level. And yeah, that's it. Uh, I, I think, again, generally good news. Uh, it's not really going to change much for most Bevy developers, but it will probably help the overall stability of the project and hopefully help them with fundraising. So let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.